Hello there, my fellow grimdark smugglers, and welcome to another obscure-ish topic from Warhammer 40k lore. Similar after a fashion to my videos like Imperial Bionics, Food and Drink in the Imperium, and the more recent Voidborn episodes, today we're gonna tackle another standalone but quite interesting topic, in the form of the so-called Cold Trade. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, prepare your hidden compartments and let us proceed, shall we? The so-called coal trade, as it is known in the Calixis sector, is the illegal trade of Xenos commodities by rather shady individuals who deal with the alien either for profit or for survival. Although frowned upon by the Inquisition's Ordo Xenos, Many of these items are not officially illegal in the Imperium, simply because of the impossibility to categorize and ban each and every one. The notables of Port Wonder have a saying, that when men first encountered the alien, their first reaction was to kill it, but the second reaction was to see how much profit they can make in dealing with the remains. This defines many of the transactions of the Coronas Expanse. Rogue traders are among the few authorized by the Imperium to have any dealings with the Xenos other than through the barrel of a boulder, and these dealings, whether from trade or clandestine archaeological dig, are the source of profit and power. However, the essential part of gathering said profit and power requires dealing with sources and agencies in the Calixis sector, where possession of many of these goods is heretical and illegal. The goods can range from anything to weapons and vehicles, to textiles and food, from dangerous fuels and supplies, to common building materials. If something is of genuine alien origin, there is a market for it. Exotic goods and arcane technological wonders fetch the highest of prices, although connoisseurs of alien art and music are always ready to bid high as well. Radical inquisitors and heretics are also steady customers, ready to study and utilize the devices of mankind's enemies against them. Explorers that can fulfill these desires become part of the cold trade, the secretive exchange of alien wares for imperial money which goes on between the Calixis sector and the Coronas expanse. It is an underground economy of untold wealth, and a source of riches for both regions but also a source of untold mystery and threats to the very existence of humanity. Some rogue traders may be fully chartered to conduct dealings with any Xenos they want. Others may only contact them but not engage in trade. Others still have no warrant whatsoever for any kind of involvement. But where there is money to be made, there is always ways to get around that. The cold trade has existed in the Calixa sector in some shape or another, even before the sector's official beginning. With the coming of the Inquisition also came the strictures against dealing with the Xenos and their wares, lest the human soul be contaminated by such unholy devices. As the rule of imperial law became more and more firm in the sector, the trade shrank, with only the most prosaic and harmless alien items still to be found. It was the opening of the Maw that brought new life to the coal trade, with a dazzling number of fresh opportunities with each star system discovered. It seemed that each day new artifacts were uncovered and new weapons unleashed to fuel the grasping avarice of the Calixian merchants. Dead worlds divulged their secrets to skillful excavators, and new worlds were willing, or made willing, to offer their goods for the enrichment of the rogue traders. These were the so-called open years, when Port Wonder's authority was just a step above a lawless footfall. Anything could be trafficked with little care as to who might be watching, with the Inquisition and the planetary enforcers overwhelmed by the deluge. These were also years of open warfare between many of the larger trading fleets as they fought over trading establishments, over warp routes, over system access points, and other foundations of their prosperous livelihoods. The conflicts range from subtle assassination to outright planetary bombardment. While vast fortunes were still to be made, 
this violence and unpredictability were impacting upon the prophets more and more. During the worst of the violence, Port Wonder became nothing more than a platform to a series of deck battles and devious betrayal. Such a state of affairs could not continue indefinitely though, or at least not if profits were to be made. Just as the situation became untenable, it was the orcs coming to the rescue, or at least after a fashion. Wa Golgrog's massive fleet surrounded and besieged Port Wonder in 422 and 41. In the wake of the near fall of Port Wonder, the Calixis sector governor gave in to petitions from the Imperial Adepta and certain noble houses and returned the station to the control of the Imperial Navy. And then, after a couple of decades, the Navy restored order with an iron fist. Interestingly, this actually had a stabilizing effect on the code trade. Some of the most dangerous players in the trade were caught and executed, and the remainder found that they had to take their conflict underground to avoid attention. As a result of Port Wonder's resurgent stability, the second major event in the history of the coal trade followed. Five of the most powerful illicit organizations in the coal trade gradually came to an agreement. They began working together, driving out the irritants and the lesser traders, and carving up the lucrative business of Zeno's artifacts and goods. In time, they would become known as the Quintet. For several centuries afterwards, the system maintained Zeno's trading to the betterment of all. But in the more recent years, there are cracks in the cartel alliance. Forgotten rivals are gaining power, they find new sources of alien goods and warp routes, Calixian buyers are attempting to pierce their near monopoly and deal directly with welcoming Zeno's merchants. And increasing inquisitorial attention has crushed long-standing trade agreements, and killed many others as they were coming to fruition. Now, the actual trade of these things requires a local place to conduct business. The coal trade exists in a dichotomous manner, openly conducted in the lawless Coronas expanse, but hidden from view in the Calixis sector. A good rogue trader will match the needs of the deal and the dealers with the appropriate locations where initial discussions will take place. Making the site part of the initial negotiation is often the first step of the deal. But a trader should also take care, as the quickest way for a deal to go sour is to make a mistake before it even begins. Port Wonder itself is widely known as the place where many transactions, illicit or otherwise, in the expanse start and end. Either at the Void Station itself, or the many asteroid facilities and satellite ships located in Rubicon 2's orbit. Another main locale is Footfall, the dark echo of the port on the other side of the Maw. Here, one can freely make deals of almost any nature, although with omnipresent heavily armed bodyguards. Many traders eschew violence except where absolutely necessary because it is bad for future deals. Between these two main places are the so-called Stations of Passage, locations inside the Maw where skillful navigators can drop out of the warp in relative safety. The various planets, ruins and debris fields make for good spots for furtive dealings, as these are not often visited by the Inquisition or law enforcement agencies. Many traders prefer to avoid subsequent meeting with their contact after the initial dealing is conducted, either because the goods are too dangerous or the frost has worn thin. Thus, cold drops become the preferred way to transfer items, with both parties leaving the items for later pickup. Sharda, close to the hidden stars, is a favorite place for its remote and empty location, such that many warp routes do not even mention it. The fractured world of Deadfall is covered in deep fissures which muffle even the most penetrating aspects, making it perfect for dropping caches of manufactured goods. The asteroid remains of Zephyr floating on the edges of the rifts is also a favorite, although the hazards posed by the violently orbiting debris offer other risks to be avoided. The Calixis sector itself also has several cold drop sites, 
especially on the outskirts of the halo stars where Imperial law grows tenuous. Some desire face-to-face -face dealing inside the sector though, even though there is a greater chance of discovery, both accidental or by design. Void stations are often preferred especially for the ease of a quick exit when required. One such place is 41 Pry, a decrepit void station orbiting a gas giant in the Golgena Reach subsector. Even more notorious is Sabriel, one of the forgotten outposts along the periphery, which sometimes can make even footfall look like an Adeptus Ministorum Abbey. Lastly, there is the so-called Mist Fleet of the Coronas Expanse. This is a motley collection of minor rogue traders and petty chartist captains in ramshackle transports and raider vessels, and they also offer their ships as neutral locations for a small fee guaranteeing safe passage and assured confidentiality aboard the flotilla's myriad void ships. Their reputation is as solid as adamantium, and the mobile nature of their fleet ensures almost no chance of inquisitorial or imperial naval detection. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the cold trade of the Coronas Expanse and the Calyxis Sector for today. While it is pretty much just good old fashioned smuggling, I think that the items involved and the locations for some of these drops make the entire thing quite interesting and exotic. We're also not done with the topic yet, as there's more lore on the major factions involved in it, unique exports and more. What about you? What are your thoughts on this cold trade of Xeno's artifacts and materials? Would you become a smuggler yourself, or would you prefer to be on the side of the law and try to stop them? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects!